Looks like we have something different here from Constanza. Bienvenidos, amantes de la tecnología. I nailed it, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, we have something even more different. Today I'm sharing just my experience using two different displays, right? One from the good old Galaxy Tab S7 Plus here, which is the Super AMOLED display. And of course, what it's been like using the mini LED on the iPad Pro, the M1 iPad Pro, the newest one. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, to start off, these are both fantastic displays, right? And they're just so beautiful, but each one has its own, you know, advantages and also disadvantages. And just as general knowledge, here are a couple of highlights of both display types before I even share what my experience has been like using them. And let's go ahead and keep it simple. Now, the expression Super AMOLED display was actually coined by Samsung and they refer to it as an AMOLED display that has an integrated touch function essentially meaning the capacitive layer is integrated into that actual screen. It has tons of benefit, of course. It's just so beautiful. A first look here supports, you know, a wide color gamut or a wide range of colors with 100,000 to one contrast. Great view and angles, and it's actually good for battery and so much more. Now, it also does have its own disadvantages, right? It's expensive, which is why you kind of won't be able to find a cheap tablet that carries an AMOLED display. It has a shorter lifespan compared to LCD displays. It breaks easily and is not cheap to repair and a few more things. Now the mini LED on the other hand is simply a more effective way of backlighting that LCD, that display that you see there as per the name. And these are just smaller LED diodes that do bring a little bit more precision in backlighting and also allow for very strong contrast along with good color performance, you know, to that display. It's also an awesome display for entertainment. It get crazy bright. And because those tiny LEDs can be completely shut off, they allow for pretty deep black and also for, as I mentioned earlier, pretty high contrast ratio. So overall picture quality or image quality comes pretty close to what an AMOLED display would offer. And it does so while being pretty cost effective compared to an AMOLED display. Now, that being said, it is a little expensive when compared to regular LEDs. And also because it's relatively new to the mobile tech world, they are still manufacturing challenges. Hopefully you didn't fall asleep during that quick background that I was giving <laughs> on these two displays. So why don't we talk about what my experience has been like using these guys here. And before we do so, if this is your first time visiting the channel, Welcome, of course. If you do like the content so far, I truly appreciate that. Now, please do me a huge favor. Hit both the like and the subscribe button. It's a huge boost to this channel. And again, I truly appreciate that. All right, so going back to the tablets here, as I mentioned, these two offer top level displays here. And based off of the background I gave a few minutes ago, the display on the iPad Pro gets extremely bright, way brighter than the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus could ever get. I have used this under sunlight and image quality still pops very, very well. You get that great contrast ratio and because it performs so well under direct sunlight, everywhere else is just as good, if not better. And you have that great contrast ratio excellent viewing angles. Remember, HDR content here can get you up to that 1600 nits. That is really, really bright. Now, even though you're less likely to be consuming HDR content every day, this guy will still get you really, really bright image quality, even with regular content, like regular resolution, you could get up to 600 nits, just like it was the case with the 2020 iPad Pro, you get up to 600 nits with just like your regular full screen. And that resolution here is 2732 by 2048, and it is powered by 10,000 mini LEDs and a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. That's the reason I keep bringing up the contrast ratio. Just like it's been the case with the previous iPad, navigation is really smooth here. Plus, you have the Pro Motion technology supported here. So you get that 120 hertz refresh rate supported by this iPad, and it would adjust to kind of enhance that experience for you. Now, as far as the hollow effect or the blooming effect or blooming gate some people call it i actually just stumbled upon that on twitter i wasn't aware of that even though i already had 
the tablet and I had been using it. So I really started paying attention after I saw that on Twitter. And with that being said, I don't find it to be prevalent unless you always have the tablet at max brightness, where in some situation you may notice a little bit of that bleed into, you know, darker areas, but it's really not that frequent. And I've also noticed that when you let the system, you know, adjust the brightness manually, you are less likely to find yourself in a situation to find or to encounter a blooming or hollowing effect, right? It's again, I don't, you really have to be looking for it to find it. It may just be my eyes. And also depending on the angle at which you're taking a picture of it, it may just exaggerate what you see on the screen. But anyway, so that's that. And the next thing here is that when you look on the side of the bezel here, you will notice a little bit of a shadow left behind. So the black bezel seems to be dragging around a little bit of a shadow. Again, nothing major. You really have to pay close attention to it or carefully look in order to see it. Now, on the other hand, the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, of course, is boasting the Super AMOLED display and it is super crisp. AMOLED displays, as I mentioned earlier, are of course more more premium displays, which also explains the price tag, right? They are not cheap at all. The resolution on the Tab S7 Plus is 2800 by 1752. Excellent contrast ratio with really, really good viewing angles. Now it gets a little reflective, just a tiny bit, but then again, as I mentioned, fantastic viewing angles. You get those super deep blacks and also those super deep reds and colors in general are just very vibrant on this tablet. It does also support 120 Hertz refresh rate on here. So again, navigating and going through stuff just so smooth. Now with all of that being said, it definitely does not get nearly as bright as the iPad 600 or 1000 or 1600 nits with HDR, mainly because of the nature of this type of display compared to an LCD, right? But it does get bright enough for you to really enjoy your content in different environments. Just like it is the case with other AMOLED displays, there's a little bit of that wobbling when you're scrolling up and down, depending on the type of content that you're scrolling through and depending on the lighting. So it can be more pronounced or less pronounced depending on how you film it or depending on the content that you're going through. And that is really nothing new, right? We knew that way before. Now, here's the overarching point of this video, right? Both displays are fantastic and each one has its you know, pros and cons also. And generally before going for either one of these two tablets, people will consider a number of variables, right? Things like compatibility, you know, operating system, price, size, and all of that good stuff. And they'll do that just to make sure that it fits their needs before they jump in. Because again, these things are not cheap. Now that we've highlighted that, if you are just an average consumer and you're trying to buy these, you got to make sure that these issues are not just complete deal breakers for you. Because again, these are top-notch tablets. You can from here on, you can only go down, right? So you gotta take everything you see online, everything that people say about either one of these two screens with a grain of salt, right? It comes down to you buying this and testing it out and see if you like it, if you don't like it, return it. But other than that, the average user, I don't think these issues would actually affect them. Anyways, I hope you found this informative. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and catch you in the comment section. I'm also gonna catch you in the next video as always, of course. Stay safe out there.